Hi everyone, Miss Silla here, Learn to Grow. I hope that you guys are having a good week. So lately, I've been dealing with the white cabbage butterfly, also known as white cabbage moth, but they're actually a butterfly species. It is the Pieris rapi species, and they feed on cabbage plants or the brassica family. And so I've been going around the garden in the mornings, hand picking their green larvae. So those green little caterpillars that can actually uh, devour little seedlings or even a whole kale leaf overnight so I'll show you in this video oh and by the way I caught one guys so yesterday morning I went out in the garden with our kitchen broom and my husband was laughing at me hysterically because I'm running around in the garden trying to catch it so that was pretty funny um, but anyways so I was happy to catch one and I placed it in our kids butterfly habitat along with a few of the uh, larvae that I handpicked from the plants so that will be a nice or fun little science project so they can watch the life cycle which is metamorphosis the life cycle of an insect or butterfly um, anyways guys, so let's walk around the garden. I'll show you uh, the larvae that I found and we'll go over some things that you can do to get rid of them and or maybe prevent them. So I just came out here this morning on my daily garden walk. I'm in the front garden and I noticed that something has been munching on the dinosaur kale. Look at the leaves. Even almost half of them are missing so I'll show you what I caught actually handpicked them that's what I usually do this one is pretty bad so what I usually do is relocate them and just pretty much feed them to the wild birds there is a tree stump in the backyard and that's where I put them and the birds go, go crazy over them sometimes I feed them to the chickens it's best to handpick them as soon as possible or they will devour a whole plant and this has happened to me. It actually ate one of my basil seedlings, also pepper seedlings last year and they can devour them in one night, especially if it's a young seedling or a small plant. You can also inspect your plants for their droppings. So if you see these black round droppings, then there are larvae present in your brassica plants. Found some more in the kale plants in the backyard and these are much smaller. It looks like they just emerged from their cocoon. They're only about each a centimeter long. Here's one that hasn't emerged yet. So we'll keep an eye on this one. We're actually putting these in a butterfly net with the adult white butterfly that we caught. This is where I relocate them on this tree stump. And soon the robins stellar jay or even the woodpecker that hangs out here daily will feast on them now if you'd like to you can also put them in soapy water but i think it's just better to feed them to the animals now here are three ways that you can do to prevent those larvae from eating your crops so the first one is looking for their eggs on the underside of the leaves which i failed to do i should have done that about two three weeks ago so if you find the eggs you can scrape them off the leaves and discard them and the second one is hand picking them early in the morning and i've had a really uh, or really good results hand picking them in the mornings like I have the past couple of days and I think I found almost 20 of them and again you can relocate them for the wild birds and or sometimes we feed them to the chickens and a couple of organic pesticides that you can use are BT and it stands for Bacillus thuringiensis it is actually a soil dwelling bacterium which will kill insect larvae so it does not target the other insects or beneficial insects such as bees or wasps ladybugs but it will it will kill insect larvae and what it does is the bacteria will destroy their guts and or um, cause an infection and these larvae eventually die now the other one is neem oil using a neem oil spray and you can use one teaspoon neem oil to 32 ounces of water and about half a teaspoon of dish soap which will help stick help the neem oil spray stick to the plants now the only thing with neem oil is that we want to avoid spraying any flowers because it can harm possibly harm beneficial insects and the neem oil works um, by by disturbing their hormone system and will prevent the insects or the larvae from eating so they starve to death so those are a few things that you can do to prevent these larvae from eating your crops okay. 
airplane there <laughs> so these are the things that I've done and used in the past that has worked for me and that I feel that are safer to use than um, chemical pesticides which I try to avoid as an organic gardener so let me know what you guys use and what works for you we'd love to hear from you guys leave a comment down below I hope that you guys found this video helpful and if you did please give it a thumbs up and share it with your family and friends thanks for joining me today everyone enjoy your day and happy gardening